Click away for FPL today. Give us a subscribe. What's up, guys, and welcome to FPL Today. I'm the man in the know, J&O, and welcome to my team preview for Game Week 5, where we look at how my team currently stands going into Game Week 5 after the international break and try and make some moves and figure out what we're going to do to improve our FPL rank. So if that is something you are interested in, please make sure to hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, and also that like button so you can support the channel. And all of these stats do come from Fantasy Football Fix, partner of the channel. Here is a quick video from them. Use artificial intelligence and Optostats to build your new squad for the new season. Analyze the highest owned players and most popular starting squad currently entered into the FPL. Upload your squad at fantasyfootballfix.com now to improve your FPL performance. Click the link below or head over to fantasyfootballfix.com to get started. So guys, we get into the meat and bones of it and unfortunately right now our overall rank is just over 2 million, about 62,000 over 2 million, which is probably the worst start to any season I have had. However, we are hopeful that our team is now in a position where we can start to improve our rank and start climbing that leaderboard. Currently on 216 points, we are going into game week 5 with what looks like right now a 4-4-2, although of course this could change. We have Pope in goal, hopeful of a clean sheet, but Brighton Hove Albion have been more attacking. It is away, so we'll have to see what happens there. Hopefully Pope can get some save points on top of a clean sheet because we need the points where we can get them. We then got Digne, Zinchenko, Trent and Lundström against Bournemouth away, Norwich away, Newcastle at home and Southampton at home. All good fixtures for my defenders, hence why we've gone with four at the back. Lundström, of course, could potentially get an assist or a goal. And then all the other defenders are capable of clean sheets and attacking returns. Then in midfield, of course, we've got Kevin De Bruyne and Raheem Sterling against Norwich away. Hopeful for Sterling to do something in this one. Probably leaning towards him being captain. Issue is, of course, Sterling has done well away. But Salah also can do well at home against Newcastle. That could be a high-scoring fixture. It has been in history gone past however Newcastle are a team that can be defensively solid but I just can't see him keeping Liverpool out then of course we've got Dendonka actually in the starting lineup now there's a risk he won't play but with Chelsea at home Chelsea in the second half seem to drop off and allow teams to score goals so hopefully Dendonka even if he doesn't start could be on in the second half and get some sort of attacking returns he's there instead of Cantwell because we're still going to be playing Pookie and of course it's not the best fixture for Norwich with Man City at home then we've got Barnes also playing Brighton Hove Albion away like Pope we're hopeful Barnes can get back to his scoring ways his underlying stats have looked decent so I'm okay with Barnes and now the fixtures do start to look quite good for Burnley the sub bench we can gloss past Button because it's very unlikely he's going to play. Delefeu, Arsenal at home. Watford have changed their manager. They've gone back to Flores. So we'll see what happens with Watford. I'm probably still going to be transferring out Delefeu at some point. I don't particularly see anything drastically changing to make Delefeu a better option than some of the other strikers out there. But it is an interesting situation and potentially something could come of this managerial change. Then Cantwell, Man City at home. That's why we're going Don Donka. I just feel like Wolves are going to give Chelsea more of a match than Norwich could potentially give Manchester City. And then Rico, the last sub, he doesn't look like he's going to get into the squad again this season. So Rico on a wild card might be someone I change, but right now he's just kind of there by proxy. But now we get to the part of the video that is the important part. And what transfers are we actually considering to make? Now there's four players on screen. Those were the players I was looking at before the international break. But having dived a bit deeper, potentially there are some additional ones I'm also considering. The main position I'm looking to change in is midfield. Probably changing Dendonka out for someone like McGinn or Mount. That's who I was looking at at the beginning of the season. Now for me, Mount looks the better option than McGinn. Although McGinn does look half decent. But I'm also now considering the likes of Harry Wilson, who, although he hasn't started in many games, 
has looked good in the first four game weeks. We have, of course, a Wobi at Everton now coming into the side. They looked better as an attacking threat with a Wobi in the starting lineup, and Everton still have some fixtures where they can do the business in. Trossard has had good underlying stats as well at Brighton Hove Albion. And then, of course, West Ham do have some good fixtures as well. There's just plenty of options right now. You've even got Sabalos who you could look at at Arsenal. He has looked good when he's played, apart from when he's played in some big games and not really showed up or not started. But the players I was focused on when making the stats and graphics for this video were McGinn at 5.6, Mount at 6.2, Harler at 7.5 and Jordan Ayew from Crystal Palace at 5.1. Now, if I downgrade Delefeu to Jordan Ayew, Ayu probably isn't going to be the player that I start every single game week, but it would allow me to bring in a heavier hitter in midfield, the likes of Mount, who right now, if I just did a like for like, I couldn't actually afford to bring in. As Mount is my favoured option to join the midfield, we'll look at him first. At 6.4 million, we have a player with 22 points in the first four game weeks from two goals. He's had 14 shots on goal, only one of which, however, was a big chance. Five of those shots came from inside the box, so that means nine have come from outside the box. However, he has had seven shots on target and hasn't expected goals at one, so he's outperforming his expected goals by one goal. And then as far as chance creation, he has eight chances created with three chances he created being shots on target with an expected assist of 0.3. If we compare that to McGinn, who was his biggest rival for this position up until I had a deeper dive into the stats, 17 points, one goal, eight shots, one big chance, with three of them being from inside the box and four of them being on target, we expected goals at 0.8, which is just lower than Mason Mount. He's also had one assist from five chances created, two of those being shots on target, and expected assists at 0.4. Now the thing is, you save 0.8 million with McGinn over Mount, but there is so many options right now in that kind of budget range, and I just don't know which is the best option to go for just yet. There's the potential I hold a transfer just because I don't know which move to make, and a big issue is I kind of want Sebastian Haller after having a look at his underlying stats, which could dictate who I go with in midfield. The issue I have is I'm also looking at players like Manuel Lanzini who has expected goals at 0.78 and expected assists at 0.83. Also looking at Awobi which would be a bit of a pump because there's not too much data on him but he's got expected goals of 0.54 and he hasn't played that much. So Awobi is someone I'm definitely considering. Harry Wilson just seems to be a player that can score really good goals which means he may have played his way into that Bournemouth side and Harry Wilson at the moment has 0.55 expected goals with 0.37 expected assists. And from that, he's got two goals, which means he's drastically outperforming his expected goals. Trossard was one I was looking at, but it looks like he won't be back by game week five. But the one that really worries me is Daniel James, who I don't have a graphic for right now, but he's had 11 shots with two attempted assists. And he's got expected goals at 1.09, that's slightly higher than Mason Mount, with expected assists at 0.20, which isn't that great. However, he seems to be getting into the right places at the right times and potentially could continue to do well for Manchester United. Now, this could be a little bit of a bias, but I've been turned off of Man United players for a while through playing FPL just because they haven't always performed for me very consistently and for a long period of time. But Daniel James is definitely someone that at 0.3 million cheaper than Mount is someone I could actually bring in now. However, that would mean I couldn't afford Harla. So we will look at the forward stats now as well. These are the two forwards I'm considering. Both Harla for his form right now and Ayu for the fact that he has been playing, scoring and is a cheap third striker option. Looking at Harla, he's got 23 points so far this season and also didn't play in game week two. He's got three goals with nine shots on goal, four of them being big chances, nine of which are from inside the box, six of which are on target, with expected goals at 2.9, which means he isn't drastically outperforming his expected goals. There was a live stream clip released late last week, which went into more details into Harla's actual goal chances which show he's getting goal chances in very good areas makes me believe he could continue to score in the Premier League. 
And then looking at Jordan Ayew at 5.1 million, he's got 20 points so far this season, which is a pretty good return. Two goals, the underlying stats aren't necessarily as great. Five shots, two big chances, three from inside the box, three on target, and only expected goals at 1.0. Very similar to Mason Mount in the fact that he's outperforming his expected goals by one full goal. But you've also got chance creation, not great chance creation, but you've got some with two chances created, one of those being a shot on target and expected assist at 0.1. Now, I for me, would literally be someone to come in so I could have a stronger midfield or potentially a stronger defence if an option came up later into the game. However, he has done enough for me to consider him in that role. It's just, do I want a player like him who could score sitting on my bench? Anyway, guys, hopefully that has helped you with some of your decision-making in the Fantasy Premier League game and gives you an insight into what I am thinking to improve my rank from around the 2 million mark. If this video has helped you in any way, please do consider, again, hitting that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can stay notified of my videos and my live streams. Feel free to join in the live streams. It's a great little chat, a relaxed chat about FPL where you guys get to ask me questions and I do rate some people's teams at the end of the stream as well. And also, if you are interested, do check out my Patreon, which is only $1 a month where you can join a Discord where, again, we talk FPL, you will get priority questions on the live streams, and you will get monthly and season-long FPL games. Jeff Holt was the winner of August Manager of the Month, so congratulations to Jeff Holt. I've been JNO, this has been FPL Today, and remember, it's all about the game.